Uh, thank you for watching my talk. I'm happy to be giving a talk at PyCon APAC. I'm Takanori Suzuki. Uh, my title, talk title is Introduction to Structural Pattern Matching. Agenda of this talk. First, I will share my motivation and goals of this talk. Next, I will introduce what's new in Python 3.10. I will explain the syntax, then I will explain the syntax of structural pattern matching. Finally, various patterns will be explained with code examples. I'd be happy to take pictures and share them and give you feedback on Twitter or something. Hashtag is sharpycon apac. My Twitter is at Takanori. And this slide available on slides.takanori.net. And I've already shared this slide on Twitter. Please check it out, sharpycon apac. Before the main topic, I will introduce myself. I'm Takanori Suzuki. My Twitter is Takanori. If you like, please follow me. I'm vice chairperson, vice chairperson of PyCon JP Association, and I'm director of B Proud Inc. My title is Python Climber. I'm also active in several Python related communities in Japan. Now, let's get to the main topic. Uh, there are a lot of new features in Python 3.10. And I think uh, structural pattern matching looks pretty useful. I'd like to you to know about it and try it out. This is motivation of this talk. And goal of this talk. Uh, after this talk, you will learn the syntax and the basic usage of structural pattern matching. And you will learn about the various patterns and how to use them. Then you'll be able to try it tomorrow. Please try structural pattern matching. Uh, this talk's prerequisites. This talk is for intermediate level. You should have a basic understanding of Python syntax. For example, tuple, list, dict, and if statement and define functions and uh, is instance function and data class type hinting and more. First, I have questions. Have you used Python 3.10? Please raise a hand. <laughs> Thank you. And do you know the new features in Python 3.10? Please raise a hand. Thanks. First, I will introduce to the new features of Python 3.10. Uh, the new features are summarized in the What's New page on the Python official documentation. This is a link, and then we'll open the What's New in Python 3.10 page and summarize the new features. And Python 3.10 was released on October 4, 2021. Python 3.10 has many new features. By the way, who are you? This snake image is Python 3.10 release logo. You can find the new features of 3.10 around this snake. Um, and here. 
There are five, five major new features written in the logo. Uh, parent size context manager, better typing syntax, better error message, structural pattern matching, and better de debugging. In this talk, I will talk about structural pattern matching. Okay. Structural pattern matching. Uh, because of the large feature of structural pattern matching, it is divided into three PEPs. Three PEP is uh, specification, motivation, and re rational, and tutorial. If you are interested, please read these PEPs. So long, long articles. Uh, this sentence is the motivation for the structural pattern matching written in PEP, PEP three, oh, sorry, PEP six, three, five. Uh, structural pattern matching syntax is found in many languages from Haskell, Arang, and Scala to Elixir and Ruby. A proposal for JavaScript is also under consideration. And this is motivation of structural pattern matching. So the if if else idiom is often used to check type or shape of an object. For example, is instance has ATTR, len, then function, and key indict or something. Use match sequence, match statements to write more elegantly. This is structural pattern matching. This is a motivation for structural pattern matching. In steps six, three, four, yeah. Now that you know the motivation, let's talk about the syntax. This is syntax, general syntax of pattern matching. A match statement takes an expression and compares its value to succeed patterns, give us one or more case blocks. This is generic syntax. And soft keywords. Soft keywords are uh, new language specification in Python 3.10. Match, case, and underscore. Uh, soft keywords. Soft keywords can be used to identify your names. You can use match variable to string match, it's okay. But class is keyword, class equal, class variable. Uh, if they find class variable, it's the invite syntax. Next, let's talk about patterns. This is a syntax of the structural pattern matching I introduced before. You can specify various patterns, various patterns after case. I will introduce patterns with code examples. First, literal patterns. Literal patterns are the simplest patterns. If the value of a beer style is Pilsner or IPA or Hazy IPA. Then if the beer style Pilsner, then here will be executed. Okay. And if the value doesn't match any of the patterns without Pilsner, IPA, Hazy IPA, then it will match underscore. Underscore is wildcard pattern. And OR patterns, vertical bar is OR. This pattern matches IPA or session IPA. If beer style is IPA or session IPA, result is I like it.
and retailer patterns without wild card. Uh, I commented out the last wild card. East value doesn't match any of the patterns. Pilsner IPA, hazy IPA. Then nothing will happen. If the beer, beer style equal eight, nothing happen. Hmm. What? Does it look like very useful, does it? Uh, if I write it in um, if statement, you won't see much difference. This is if statement code. Replace uh, before matching statement, match case statement. You won't see much difference, you are right. But pattern matching is much more powerful. I will introduce useful patterns. Retail, retail and variable pattern. Let's consider a function receives beer and food orders by tuple. First, first is beer, beer name, and second is food name. If the argument is empty, 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 empty tuple, the pattern in the third line will be matched. Case empty, empty, match here. Then we down, please order something. Okay. Next, if the argument is IPA empty tuple, the pattern in the fifth line will be matched. Then the first value of the tuple IPA is then assigned to the beer variable. Beer's value is IPA. The result is I drink IPA. I drink IPA. If the argument is IPA not tuple, oh, sorry, uh, brace is parenthesis is need, need parenthesis, IPA not. The pattern in the ninth line will be matched. Then the first value IPA, the first value of tuple IPA is then assigned to the beer variable. And the second value nuts is then assigned to the food variable. The result is I drink, I drink IPA with nuts. If the argument is IPA nuts some tuple, the wild card pattern will be matched because the length of the tuple is not two. The result is one beer and one food only. Make sense? I write it with an if statement. I think this code is a bit confusing. I think much case is more clear. Which do you like? Structure, pattern matching, and if statement. And there is one note of caution. The order of the cases is important. The patterns are compared in order from top to bottom. So, if you write it this way, this way, beer and food is fast. It will match the first pattern. I send IPA and empty tuple, but this line matched. As a result, no other patterns will be breached. These three patterns will be not weak, not rich. Next, classes patterns. I create order, order class. Order class has beer and food attributes. First case 
is the pata much when beer and food are empty. First pata. And second case is a pata much when only food is empty. Then the value of order.pia will be assigned to pia variable. Order.pia assigned to pia variable. Third case is order.food food value, order.food value assigned to food variable. And fourth case is order to beer and order dot food value assigned to beer and food. This is the results of before the code. So results are here. It works in the same way as the previous tuple case. I sent empty and please order something. I sent order beer only. And I drink well. And I sent order food only, and I eat fries. And I sent uh, beer and food. I drink food. Uh, I drink beer with food. And uh, I sent not order class. This is not, uh, result is not an order. And we write this code of classes pattern with if statement. Uh, if statement related code is here. It looks a little cluttered. And uh, is instance and uh, check attributes value. And classes patterns are much more powerful. There are three classes representing order class of uh, beer class and food class and water class. Each classes has attributes, beer style and beer size and the food name and the water number. Water number means uh, the number of classes of water. This code written in classes pattern with multiple classes. It is easy to recognize because it branches based on the type of classes. If the order is via class, match here and uh, capture the style and size attribute to style and the size. And the food class, the water class, and the other class. Mm, it's nice. I write that code with if statements. Hmm. The match case is cleaner and readable, don't you think? Next, sequence patterns. I will explain about sequence patterns. In this case, I'll pass the order text. For example, uh, beer space IPS space pint, food space nuts, water space free, and beer. And this code can match the patterns of multiple sequences. In this case, there are patterns with list strengths of one, two, and three. If all the text is beer, match here. And if all the text is food, nuts, or water three, a match here, length is two. And if all the text is via IPA pint, match here, because length of the list is three. Also, if you write the pattern like this, any value in the list will be matched with a specific string, bill, food, and this, and something. This is a combination of sequence patterns and literal patterns. 
sequence patterns and the literal patterns. Then the order text is food nuts much here because uh, first element of list is food. And if order text is order three, much here. Hmm, nice. And I, I will explain capturing much into sub patterns. Uh, valid to be a size a pint or half pint only. For example, beer IPA pint is valid, but beer IPA one liter is invalid. Using the OR patterns in this way, OR pattern is particle bar. Uh, you can match any value, but I don't know beer size. How do I get the value of size? Match uh, this or pattern match pint or half pint, but this code can't know, couldn't know beer size. In this case, use as pattern. Uh, as pattern uh, assigns signs value pint or half pint to the size uh, size variable. I send via IPA pint sent much here and pint uh, capture to size. This is as pattern. And and matching multiple values. I want to order multiple food items at once. For example, food, nuts, fries, pickles. But this sequence pattern can handle sing single food only. Does not match this pattern. If I add start to the variable name foods. Multiple values will be assigned foods variable. Now I can order multiple food items at once. We are nice. Order tickets is food, nuts, fries, pickles. Then foods is nuts, fries, pickles, tuple. Okay, last pattern is mapping patterns. The pattern is matched by map types such as dictionaries. The mapping pattern is useful for analyzing a JSON loaded dictionary. This code order dictated as several order styles and via IPA and size point I sent then match here. Via and style is IPA and size is pint to variable size. Or the dict and food, uh, nuts and water, three. And if I send size is other the pint or half pint, this world card pattern is matched and then they turn a no beer size. And you can use built-in classes to specify the type of the value. In this code, food and beer style are storing, storing STR. Food is stored STR and the style is STR. And the number of water is an integer only. If the value of water is string, if the order dict water and three is a string, it will not match this pattern. If I send water three, three is integer, 
match here. But this dictionary does not match any pattern. Finally, let me introduce GAS. Uh, if you write an if statement after the pattern, it becomes a GAD. This if statement is GAD. This code will match if the second value of order list is an integer. If I said order three, uh, sorry, order three or order 15 match here. After that, a guard checks if the number is in the range of one to nine. Then I think order list is water three, match here and check guards and three is true. Then uh, print three glasses of water, please. But I sent order list is water 15. Much here, then guards, check guards is false, false. Uh, the match here, then match here. And response is you can only order one to nine glasses of water. Hmm. Nice. Summary of this talk. I told about motivation of this talk and motivation of structural pattern matching and syntax of pattern matching, a generic syntax and match case and mat soft keywords is a new Python specification and match case and underscore is soft keywords. And last, I explained several patterns, literal pattern, variable pattern, process pattern, sequence pattern, blah, 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 blah. so many patterns. If you think structural pattern matching looks good, give it try. Try structural pattern matching with Python 3.10. Uh, this is references are here. What's new in Python 10 and the Python release page and the structural pattern matching pips, specification, motivation and rational, and tutorial. Thank you for your attention to my this to my talk. I hope to see you at PyCon Head on site somewhere, Japan or Asia or somewhere. Thank you. Thank you.